It's the terrain here that's causing the greatest headache for weary firefighters. In some areas, it's so steep and dense, crews and equipment simply cannot get in. The fire's been burning for 28 days, but today it again jumped containment lines and flames are now heading towards Laura. Crews from across the state are relieving battle-weary firefighters and locals who have been on tenterhooks for almost four weeks. You can say the nobody's worn off. My uh, other half and, and the younger kids have been over in Piri for a while now. Backburning efforts late yesterday allowed crews to shore up containment lines on the southern boundary. Firefighters will be hoping that extra containment lines and fire breaks made by earth movers will help protect these towns should they come under direct threat. To put this fire out, they have to wait for it to come out of the ranges and into open farm ground. He knocked them back, but maybe you might have a different view this time. Well, let's head out to Jeff Brock in Frome, and he's speaking with Matt Doran. Thanks, Chris. Well, as you mentioned, we're here with Jeff Brock in his house where the party is just gearing up. Jeff, how are you feeling about your chances tonight? Uh, pretty optimistic, but uh, in this field you're never over, overconfident, but I, I think I uh, could be OK, but uh, it'll be a bit of a tense couple of hours coming up, I think. Our reporter, Matt Doran, filed this report from Port Piri in the centre of the seat of Frome. He was never going to please everyone, but Jeff Brock will be hoping with the regional development portfolio he'll at least show his doubters that he can deliver for country South Australia. This is the second time an independent member for Frome has decided the outcome of the state election. Another former Port Piri mayor, Ted Connolly, sided with the Dunstan Labor government in 1972 and accepted the speaker's position. He served one term. Pokies and porkies. Nick Xenophon is against both of them. And he's enlisted some help to push his point. No porkies. Oh! Reform is quickly becoming one of the hallmarks of his time at the bench. Now, Chief Justice Chris Caracas is pushing technology into the spotlight. The challenges are um, efficiency uh, and reducing cost. The Grand Canal Venice was thought to be a genuine work by Turner when Adelaide's Haywood family bought it for 300 guineas in 1954. But doubts were soon raised about whether it was by the hand of the great artist who died in 1851. Further examination is still to be carried out. The experts say that regardless of its authenticity, it's still an important work that may show how artists of that era learnt their craft. Police say the car was travelling north and tried to overtake a petrol tanker, lost control, hit the truck and then collided head-on with a ute travelling in the opposite direction. Significant detours through Wilmington, Melrose and Laura had to be put in place by local police for much of the day. Road trains have been forced to wait for hours either side of the crash site because there was no other route for them to safely take and no way for them to turn around. Small and furry, but a massive pest. This year, the mice population is expected to again reach plague proportions. It's crunch time for the farmers on York Peninsula as they begin sowing in coming weeks. It'll be then that the full extent of this mouse plague is known and how effective their baiting and trapping has been. It's not exactly the fire front, but it's the front line for firefighter preparedness. Around 80 volunteers from across the country have taken part in a study replicating extreme conditions, such as those recently seen in the Blue Mountains. We've had crews out over a two-week period working 12-hour shifts. So throughout today, over a long period, we'll do series of work and rest just like we would when we're on the fire ground. Ross Trevor resident Joan Stone says she'll know when it's time to give up her driver's licence. Even though the mandatory tests will be a thing of the past, doctors will still be required to report if they believe any driver, regardless of age, is unfit to hold a licence. It's become a dominant feature of the Mid-North landscape since 2007. A sleeping giant, a gentle giant. The development stretches for almost 30 kilometres with 24 landowners hosting turbines on their farms. 75 of the 90 turbines have been switched on. The next stage is to energise the remaining 15, which is hoped to be completed by the end of June. Matthew Doran bravely examines the search for a new food source. For most, insects are unlikely to form part of a balanced meal but more restaurant goers are choosing a novel culinary experience. They're very shocked by the, by the thought of putting it in their mouths and eating it. Um, however, once they do, it's kind of like, ah, oh, I, don't, I don't see what the big deal is. Um, the idea of eating ants, beetles and crickets could be reserved for a more high-end dining market for now. But those in the know say within a few decades, 
cider and cicadas could be a more common choice on the menu. It's just a case of going in with an open mind. Matthew Doran, ABC News, Adelaide.